1944. La guerre, les ruines, l'exode. Out of the rubble of the Second World War, an institution was born, hoping to bring unity to a fractured world. The Council of Europe, seen by many as a democratic conscience of Europe, upholds democracy and the rule of law, promotes human rights, freedom of speech and equality. By the 1960s, it was firmly established as a bulwark of the peace process. In the world of freedom, the proudest boast is Ich bin ein Berliner. A quarter of a century later, as the Berlin Wall was torn down and the Soviet Union dismantled, the Council of Europe, now established in Strasbourg, led the way in helping communist countries transition to democracy. Today, we are once again at a defining moment in history. And once again, it is Europe's immediate neighbors at the forefront of that change. And now we are trying to help uh, the countries in the neighborhood, in North Africa, in the Middle East, and the countries in uh, some countries in Central Asia. And actually, we foresaw what's happening uh, right now in the region uh, in 2009, and we uh, established a new status uh, for those countries to integrate them, uh, to let them become closer to the uh, European institutions uh, and the European standards and Council of Europe standards. At the Assembly, there was evidence of that outreach, with the Council of Europe granting Morocco partner for democracy status, an initiative designed to strengthen cooperation with non-member states. Recognition, perhaps, of both Morocco's new constitution and the fact that it was largely immune from the unrest felt by its neighbors in the Arab Spring. We are like you. We have the same challenges, such as immigration, drug trafficking, and also terrorism. These new challenges need us to create greater cooperation between Morocco and Europe. Morocco sees itself as a model for the wider area, and it is not alone. One country that has already made the difficult transition to democracy is the former communist nation of Ukraine. A lot of changes have taken place in Europe and its neighborhood in the last 60 years. The Council has worked to create reforms to the modern challenges. The Ukraine welcomes these changes and is ready to participate. Ukraine has been a member of the Council of Europe since 1995 and earlier this year strengthened its role when it assumed the chairmanship of the Committee of Ministers. As uh, chairman of the Council of Ministers, Ukraine works uh, very closely with uh, other member states and uh, the Council of Ministers Secretariat to promote democracy and human rights in the region, but also in Ukraine itself. We are ready to share that experience with North Africa, with neighboring states, where they can gain from that experience that was not easy gained uh, by our country and by others. The Ukrainian president arrived in Strasbourg, poised to work on concluding the association agreement, a framework for closer political, economic and social cooperation, with a view to later establishing a free trade area between Ukraine and the EU. The EU is already the country's main trading partner. Exports to the region alone bring in around 8 billion euros, accounting for a third of Ukraine's international trade. Closer ties with Europe are a powerful draw for the young country about to celebrate 20 years of independence. The association agreement has an important meaning to us because it paves the path for Ukrainian membership in the EU. This is our goal. Ukraine wants to create conditions that meet European standards. The Ukraine is, after all, not only part of Europe, but its largest country by size, 
and has a population of 45 million. Growing at 4%, double the Eurozone rate, and with its FDI inflows up by 25% on last year, it's factors like this drawing the EU's attention east. It has a lot of potential and the Ukrainian people in the Orange Revolution have also shown that they want to be European and live according to European standards. So I think it is very much in European interest to try to build on that. Another huge country on the EU's eastern border is Turkey, itself looking for accession and homeland of the current president of the assembly. He and many others fear that despite the woes within the Eurozone, highlighted by the current debt crisis, the EU must pursue a path of greater inclusion. Well, this crisis showed once again that the uh, European Union uh, needs countries like Turkey and Ukraine. And uh, if you look at the, the aging problem uh, of the uh, European Union countries, uh, it is very clear that uh, this uh, institution will need definitely Turkey and Ukraine with the young and educated po population. And in the future, it, it is obvious that uh, EU and EU countries will need uh, migration. So therefore, uh, the best solution is to include the countries like uh, Turkey and Ukraine to the European uh, Union. Given the historic geopolitical changes taking place in Europe's immediate neighborhood, the Council of Europe has its work cut out. The organization is now in its 60s and still in its first full-time home in Strasbourg. But the world outside has changed. It is working to broaden its reach and adapt to an increasingly integrated and globalized world. But fundamentally, the issues it tackles remain the same. As the Council of Europe continues to fight corruption, promote the rule of law and democracy, and foster deeper economic integration, it is well positioned to, once again, help end injustice and tyranny.